How's it going everyone? I'm Onyx and today in this video I will be talking about the Blue Walkers and the new Egoist League that I think would have been better off joining the French League team PXG. However, instead of just discussing which players I think would work best for the team at the forward, midfielder, and back position, I'll be discussing the players who I think would benefit the most of joining the team. But before we get into my picks, allow me to explain what I think makes a successful player for PXG. Unlike the other new Egoist League teams, Ego really doesn't do a good job on selling the PXG team to the Blue Walkers, at least in my opinion. Ego describes PXG as a team that, quote, acts as a gay way to success for newcomers and young players. Ego also says that the market keeps getting huge investments, so the money is constantly flowing and that they're on track to be the greatest league in the world. So, what Ego basically told us about PXG is that they're good for young talent and they have a lot of money. Fucking brilliant, Ego. You basically just described the whole Neo Egoist League. Good for up and coming talent? Isn't that just the Blue Lock program as a whole? Like, am I being stupid. But after a lot of consideration, I came up with the criteria for what a player would need to have if they had any interest or desire to join PXG. I believe that the ideal player for PXG would be someone who has a new slash originally outlandish style of play, someone who has an incredibly strong and independent ego, someone who can lead a system, someone who can play a supporting role really well, and someone who wants to chase a bat. We know that Coach Loki was letting both Shido and Rin play at the same time for their first two matches. However, once players like Nanase, Tokimitsu, Zontetsu, and Karasu began to develop more and more, and start forming factions with the respective striker, Loki implemented the 15 minute change system for PXG's match against Barcha. It is because of Loki's coaching style that I think players like Ren and Shido who have incredibly strong egos, unique and strong abilities, such playstyles, and strikers who can lead a squad are what we'll be looking for today to join PXG. And since PXG's strength as described by Ego is its endless bag of money, any players that we know of that are trying to chase a bag will get some honorable mentions here. But with that setup out of the way, let's get into the list starting off with the potential backs. I'm excited to finally be able to name a back that isn't already playing for the Ubers, that being the first timer in this series, Igaguri. Igaguri has always been the comedic relief character in Blue Lock and has always gotten by just by doing the bare minimum to survive. However, since the second selection, we've seen Igaguri begin to develop his foul flopping slash foul merchant slash militia slash whatever you want to call it technique. Most recently, we've seen Igaguri use his tactic on Raichi during the 10 day period in between Bastard Mutant's match against Manchide City and the Ubers. We see as Igaguri manages to even best Raichi with his technique. Even now, Igaguri is confident enough to say that he can draw a foul on anyone that tries to come at him on his right side. If this is a true statement, that could make Igaguri an actual threat for the first time in his career, especially considering how light Igaguri's frame is, muscle head forwards like Baro and Kunigami, and blazing speedsters like Chiguri probably have a hard time not absolutely bulldozing through Igaguri, which in this case would be a good thing. We haven't really gotten to see Igaguri play at all since the first selection, and only a tiny bit in the second selection, but those portions of the manga weren't even included in the anime. Needless to say, Igaguri's weapon and style of play is so out there and different compared to the rest of the blue lockers in the new Egos League that I think his unique abilities could see him find good bids and offers from clubs around the world. Moving on to a pseudo back that I've talked about before in the series, Rayo Mikage. First and foremost, the reason why I'm including Rayo in this list is because he's a snobby rich kid. While he himself may not be chasing after after a bag in the long term, he's certainly trying to encourage Nagi to. Back in chapter 207, after Nagi received his huge initial bid, Rayo's mind immediately went to money as the new source for Nagi's motivation. As a reminder, since Nagi was able to beat Asagi by scoring his revolver goal, he felt demotivated after achieving his objective. Rayo told Nagi that he should start aiming for a 300 million yen bid, as that's the average lifetime earnings of a Japanese man. Even skipping forward in time to chapter 247, we see as Rayo's become more concerned with his bid and if he'll even be able to clear the Neo Igus League and join Japan's U20 team. If Rayo were to be on P and work under either Rin or Shido, he'd be able to play better and more consistently, as well as potentially getting a higher bid from the super wealthy French teams, quelling all of his worries about clearing the requirement to make the U20 team. Aside from the monetary incentive, Rayo also possesses high level leadership skills. As previously mentioned, he continues to try and find ways to motivate Nagi to reach his maximum potential, even if he isn't always successful. But even back during the first selection episode Nagi, we see Rayo uniting Team V to play as one unit and inspire Nagi to score goals for the team through the goal trading market. Rayo is also the one who helps Zon to level up his game in episode 9. While Rayo may never have been the top goal scorer during the first selection, it'd be hard to make the argument that Team V would have seen as much success if not for his leadership. While I don't think Rayo would be given the keys to the kingdom on PXG and play the role as team captain, I could definitely see him use his copy style to heighten the team's overall ability and help provide another passing resource for Shido and or Rin. But enough about the backs, let's move on to potential midfielders. To start things off, I want to start with a player that's familiar to the series, that being Hiroyo. Actually, Onyx, mind if I handle this one? Uh. Yeah, sure, mysterious stranger. Thanks, mate. Hiori's recent unlocking of MetaVision puts him among some elite company in the Neo Egress League. The only other players we've actually seen use this ability here are Nico and Rayo, but only partly. Aiku, Kaiser, and Charles, who is a child prodigy seemingly on the cusp of being new gen 11 level. 
and of course quite obviously Isagi himself. There's also Rin, who I've personally heavily suspected also has MetaVision, but that is yet to be confirmed. Either way, like I said, Kyori is one of the few people who possess such a powerful offensive weapon. This combined with Hyori's ability to play incredibly reflexively could give the PXG team a Charles Jr. to work with here. Charles is certainly the best passer we've seen in Blue Lock since Itoshi Sei's introduction. With that being said, I think Hyori is honestly the best passer of the 46 Blue Lockers by a good margin, and I think that he would honestly be second best on the team behind Charles. This gives Shido an amazingly talented second deadly passing weapon to play with. This would worry defense systems that aren't as tight as the Ubers. But imagine the combination of the three. These three can be so well connected in such an unpredictable way that it would absolutely demolish the Uber's structure. Not to mention the fact that while it might be small, he already does have experience playing in a system that revolves around Rin thanks to his time spent playing in the U20 match with the Blue Lock 11. This is all without considering the fact that Hiori himself also has an incredibly strong ego. While it may be pretty fragile since it was shattered after just one missed goal, what a bitch. If Hiori sees an opportunity to score for himself, I'm sure he won't be a afraid to take it. However, Rin and Shido are some of the best strikers in the new Egoist League, therefore I don't think Yori would ever be crazy enough to think that Shido and Rin aren't strikers that can understand and keep up with his passes. But I figured Yori's ego was something worth mentioning for this scenario. Wow, dude. You actually made some really good points. Uh, what did you say your name was again? Oh, right, silly me. My name is Raven Geeks, but you can call me Raven. Well, it's good to meet you, Raven. You definitely hyped Yori up in the right way. But speaking of Hiyori, let's talk about the man he robbed in the Ewers match, Kira Jin. Kira is a first timer to the series, and I am truthfully super excited to talk about, it, especially because of his introduction to episode Nagi. So let's get right into it. The first thing I can hear people saying is Onyx, Kira is only played as a wing back, meaning he's a back. Why are you putting him in the midfielder category? First off, it's Blue Lock. All of these motherfuckers used to be strikers. I don't think saying Kira could play as a midfielder is the most outlandish thing to come out of my mouth on the channel. Second, I feel like Kira could play really well as a left or right midfielder, the position both honestly and Zontetsu are at, respectively. Since left middles and right middles also play very similarly to wing backs, I feel like it isn't a terrible war crime to assume Kiora is capable of playing a little out of position. But with that clarification out of the way, let's get into actually analyzing Kiora. Kiora, while on the shorter side, is an incredibly nimble player. In the most recent chapter of episode Nagi, that being chapter 22 as of recording, we see Kiora being able to knock Nagi off the ball even when he's knocked out with just his hands. While we haven't gotten to see a whole lot of Kiora in either the main Blue Lock manga or Nagi spinoff, we know for a fact that Kiora gets selected by Nagi, Chiguri, and Baru's second selection team over players like Karasu and Atoya, two players that were considered top six strikers going into the U20 match. However, in the main Blue Lock manga, we haven't gotten to see Kiora do a whole lot. While we are only just a bit over 10 chapters into the PXG match, all Kiora has really done so far is get fended off by Karasu. I'm sure we'll see Kiora get more screen time as every match, two bastard players seem to get their time in the spotlight, Kunigami and Asagi Barcha, Yukimi and Corona and Manshine, Raichi and Hiyori and Ubers, and potentially now Kiora and Iguri and PXG, but as of right now, I find it important to include the fact that feet-wise, Kiora has next to nothing in live game scenarios. But speaking of characters who have plenty of screen time and feet, Let's move on to the forward position, starting off with the MC himself, Isagi Yuichi. As previously mentioned when talking about Hiyori and his use of MetaVision, Isagi is among some of the few players to have a quote-unquote complete version of MetaVision. With such a unique ability under his belt, being able to match Charles' thought process and passing would make Isagi an incredible asset to the BXG team. Not to mention, with Isagi's constant evolution and new invention of the two-gun volley, a potentially unstoppable weapon according to Isagi himself, he has an incredibly distinctive ego and playstyle. Not to mention that when it comes to leadership, Isagi definitely is isn't lacking there either. Isagi is leading his platoon of blue lock bastard players like Yuki Mia, Corona, Yori, etc. to victory and in recent chapters is even proving that he could be more useful than Kaiser. Isagi's ability to also reflexively link up with a passer like Yori would only be heightened with the presence of Charles on PXG. I feel like I've said more than enough to sell the king of adaptability to PXG, but one player that might take a little more convincing for this team is Nagi. Raven, take it away again. Oh shit, you want me to do Nagi too? Uh, well, yeah, why not? Well, as much as he's my favorite character, the dude's been on Fraud Watch for a while now, though. Plus, didn't you already say he'd play well on Barcha? Seems kind of weird to include him on two lists, no? Listen, that, that's not the point of the series. I've already mentioned Asagi on literally every other team so far. Can you please just try and sell these guys on Agi? Did a really good job with Yori. All right, fine, I guess. But I want the top link in the description for this one. We all know that Nagi's passing junkie Rayo is holding back both of their potential 
tangents, but that's not because either one of them are inherently bad. Rather, the issue seems to stem from Rayo wanting control over Nagi and dictating how he should play. And to be honest, they need to cut that shit out. Way back in the first selection when Nagi had Team V centered around him, he was working insanely well as a pure scorer, in large part thanks to Zantetsu and even more so Rayo. If you had Charles giving Nagi his impish passes and basically forced Nagi to play catch up like he did with Rayo in the first selection, Nagi would definitely be seeing more success. Although there is certainly an argument to be made saying that Nagi getting used like this won't make him a better player, it seems like on paper the pros would outweigh the cons. By having such a highly skilled pastor like Charles constantly feeding him scoring opportunities, it would force Nagi to adapt to a higher level of play, and eventually Nagi would probably awaken again or develop a new weapon. Even though there is a free goal limit per match in the NEL, it shouldn't be hard to imagine that Nagi would probably have three or four goals by the end of the Neo Egress League. While this number may not sound too crazy, remember that this is an estimation that also includes the fact that Nagi would be playing alongside Rin and Shida. These two players have a combined 10 goals as of chapter 259, so this estimation should not be taken lightly. All right, that was that. Hey man, that was great. I really like how you brought up that Nagi could reawaken if he were to play on PXG. If Nagi were to be remotivated and develop a new and stronger ego, I could see him really being a problem for the other teams and a top finisher of the race that is the NEL. But speaking of players with strong egos, let's talk about the man who is arguably the strongest ego, Baro Shoei. The audience has seen firsthand just how strong Baro is as the focal point of a team's offense, scoring a total of seven goals and having a personal record of two to one as a part of the Ubers in the new Eagles League. While the Ubers runs a system that is much more heavily catered to Baro than PXG would, having offensive support for players such as Charles, Nanase, Zontetsu, Karasu, and Toki Mitsu would still be so imposing for enemy defenders. That's not even including the fact that Baro, Rin, and Cheetah were all playing at the forward position in the scenario. While this certainly could result in a too many cooks in the kitchen situation, there's no denying that this is the most deadly offense I've mentioned in this video, probably the whole series as a matter of fact. As previously mentioned, Baro's King Ego is arguably the strongest in the entire series, and I feel like Coach Loki would love to have such a solitary ego under his team. Not to mention, like a lot of other candidates, Baro is no stranger to leadership, as he was strong enough for his teammates to trust him to lead their offense both in Ubers and the first election. Even after Baru terminated the conditions he agreed on with Snuffy, plenty of players were still willing to put their faith in him and it paid off, resulting in a goal for the newfound Eagles. While Ubers may have lost that game against Bastard, nobody could have predicted the play that caused the Ubers their loss, so I won't dig into Baru too much for that. In short, I think Baru would be a mega opposing force to battle against when you also have to worry about the system that Shido and Rin have backing them up as well. When it comes to backs, although I think Ray would be better for PXG as a whole, I truly do believe Iaguri is the one of the two backs who would personally develop the most. Even if Loki were to only give Iaguri scrap minutes in games to use his militia in a live setting, it would already be more playing time than he would get on another team. I feel Loki would be willing to throw Igaguri a bone for his unique playing style. On the side of midfielders, I think we'd once again see a newcomer take the victory, that person of course being Hiroji. Since the PXG team already has a wild and crazy passer in Charles, having a weaker version of that in Hiori would most likely result in Loki not playing Hiori as much as he would Hiori. As we mentioned before, Hiori is incredibly nimble and shows crazy on-ball feats in the episode Nagi Manga. Since we haven't seen someone with this kind of playstyle, at least to this extent, I feel like Loki would be willing to give Hiori more playing time, meaning he would benefit the most. And lastly, for the most competitive spot of forward, I think the one who would benefit the most would be Isagi. Isagi is the king of adaptability, so by putting him in with the highly reflexive Shido and the over-analytical Rin, I think Isagi's potential would skyrocket. If we look back at the U20 triad matches, Isagi's first ever time hitting flow was when he forced himself into the state after being overshadowed by, you guessed it, Rin and Shido. Considering how polar opposite Shido and Rin seem to play, and how Isagi has elements of both strikers' playstyles, I feel like this trio would continue to devour one another and potentially reach semi new Gen 11 level when the new Egoist League is all said and done. Who do you guys think would be good fits for PXG? Also, everybody, my good friend Fofo Sukuyomi just did a collab with me on his channel, so make sure you go check that video out right now. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below, and as always, I'm Onyx, and I'll see you later.